Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to unravel schizophrenia treatment, specifically about antipsychotics. What is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a term that describes a major psychiatric disorder that alters an individual's perception, thought, and behavior. People with schizophrenia are usually diagnosed between the ages of 16 and 30 after the first episode of psychosis. Starting treatment as soon as possible following the first episode of psychosis is an important step toward recovery. However, Research shows that gradual changes in thinking, mood, and social functioning often appear before the first episode of psychosis. Schizophrenia symptoms can differ from one person to another, but they generally fall into three main categories, which are psychotic, negative, and cognitive. Psychotic symptoms appear as hallucinations, delusions, and thought or movement disorder, while negative symptoms include loss of motivation, interest, or difficulty showing emotions. Cognitive symptoms appear as problems in attention, concentration, and memory. Some patients might experience all of this at once if they are not treated are three risk factors that can cause a patient to have schizophrenia disorder which are genetics, their environment and their brain structure and function. The goals of therapy varies by the phase that the patient is in such as acute phase, stabilization phase and stable phase. There are four treatment options for schizophrenia at the moment which are pharmacological intervention in which patients are prescribed with antipsychotics physical interventions such as electroconvulsive therapy, psychosocial interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapy, and service level intervention which will be offered to people with schizophrenia in the acute phase. Now, let's dive into the intriguing world of pharmacological treatment strategies for schizophrenia. In Malaysia, there are two kinds of antipsychotics which are the first generation and second generation. Here is the example of each type. First generation antipsychotics are known as typical antipsychotics. They are D2 dopamine receptor antagonists and will cause neurologic side effects. The first generation antipsychotics that we will cover in this video are cropromazine, haloperidol, and zucopentisol. This diagram shows the mechanism of action, efficacy, and pharmacokinetics of cropromazine. These side effects of copromazine include corneal deposit, contact dermatitis, photosensitivity, and extrapyramidal symptoms. Copromazine will have drug interactions with monoamine oxidase inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressant, and antihypertensive drugs. Here is the contraindication of copromazine. Contraindication refers to specific situations or conditions in which a drug should not be used because it may be cause harm to the patient. Next, the second drug is haloperidol. Haloperidol also has some effect on 5-HT2 receptors and alpha-1 receptors. Side effects of haloperidol include extrapyramidal symptoms, QT prolongation, and anticholinergic effects. Haloperidol will interact with CYP3A4 and CYP2D6 inhibitors and inducers. Patients with Parkinson's disease or those who are comatose should not use haloperidol. 
Next, we will discuss about the pharmacokinetics of zucopendicil. Side effects of zucopendicil are extrapyramidal symptoms, QT prolongation, nausea, and hyperprolactinemia. Zucopendicil will have drug interactions with clozapine, antiaromic drug, and thiazide diuretics. Zucopendicil should not be used if someone is allergic to it, or in a coma, or if they are a child. First generation antipsychotics should not be taken together with alcohol, caffeine, grapefruit, and nicotine. Second generation antipsychotics are known as atypical antipsychotics. They are serotonin dopamine antagonists that cause metabolic side effects with lower risk of extrapyramidal symptoms. Drugs that are going to be covered today is aripiprazole, clozapine, and risperidone. So let's take a look at aripiprazole. It acts like a dopamine dimmer switch and it weakly blocks dopamine D2 receptors and it also affects serotonin receptors. The side effect of aripiprazole includes insomnia, nausea and vomiting, constipation, dizziness and tiredness. Some of the drug interactions of aripiprazole are doxazosine and chlorpheniramines. If you have a known allergy to aripiprazole, it is best to avoid it. Now, let's take a look at clozapine. It is a powerful antipsychotic for severe schizophrenia. It weakly blocks dopamine D2 receptors and it also affects serotonin receptors. The side effect of clozapine includes weight gain, myocarditis, seizure, drowsiness and agranulocytosis. Some of the drug interactions of clozapine are with clopromazine and carbamazepine. Clozapine is contraindicated for existing bone marrow issues, pregnancy and people with uncontrolled epilepsy. For risperidone, it can help with both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. It blocks dopamine D2 receptors and blocks serotonin 5-HT2A receptors. Side effect of risperidone includes weight gain, drowsiness and dizziness, dry mouth, tardif dyskinesia. Some of the drug interactions of risperidone are with acetalopram and abeloparatide. It is contraindicated for people with dementia and hypersensitivity. For the monitoring parameters for schizophrenia patients receiving antipsychotic medications, based on the Malaysian Clinical Practice Guideline, we need to monitor urea and electrolytes, full blood count, hospital lipid profile including LDL, HDL, and triglyceride level, weight, fasting blood glucose, ECG, blood pressure, prolactin liver function test, and lastly the creatinine phosphokinase. Take action to the respective laboratory parameters if it exceeds the reference range and the drugs should be used with cautious and special precautions to prevent any adverse effect. as well as how to tell the difference between what is real and what's not. 
Let's work on some techniques together that can help you differentiate between the reality and hallucination. One approach is using your sense to check the validity of what are you experiencing. For example, if you hear a voice, try to focus on the sound around you and touch something nearby to ground yourself in the present moment. Okay, I'll give that a try. But Mr. Chow, what if the hallucinations feel so real? Um, for this situation, we can try another technique called cognitive restructuring. This involves the challenging about any disrupted thoughts and also belief that might be contributing to your hallucination and also the reality. For instance, we can question whether are uh, any evidence to support a belief that is your hallucination is real or if there is any alternative explanation for what are you experiencing. I see. So it's about questioning those thoughts um, and trying to find evidence to support what's real. The key is this is empowering your critical evidence of your experience. Ooh, that sounds like it could be helpful. I'll give it a try. Okay, remember, you are not alone and we will find the best strategy for you and also uh, you feel all well to not hesitate to wish me out. Thank you Mr. Chong, I really appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. That's all for our today's session and see you in the next session. So, uh, how have you been for your last session? Um, I'm still having trouble distinguishing what's real and what's not. And the voices are getting up there too. Okay, mm, I think we can try another technique called uh, cognitive behavioral therapy that might can help you to feel more comfortable and also can control your uh, feeling and also managing your voice. For this therapy, I want to focus on some strategy to help you manage the voices that you have been hearing. And also, have you noticed any specific patterns associated with, your, with them? Oh yeah, they often make me feel like I'm in danger or that something is telling me something is going wrong. Okay, uh, let's continue with the last week, uh, technique, cognitive restructuring technique and to improve your hallucination system. When you notice this thought, we will work on challenging them with more balanced and realistic thought. Also, I will help you to manage uh, the auditory and also the visual hallucination. Oh, alright. Also, I would like to discuss with you some psychosocial therapy that can help you to improve your schizophrenia symptoms and also can improve your overall well-being. Okay, that's all for today's section. I will meeting you for the next section. If the next section you still feel uncomfortable, we will undergo another therapy called cognitive enhancement therapy with you together. This therapy will focus on enhancing your cognitive skills such as our social skills, cognition, attention, memory, and also the organization skills. Thank you, Mr. Chang, for having me out.